And I want us to read the encounter when he got there. We are still at uh, 2 Kings 5. We are looking at We are looking at from verse 9 to verse 12. Naaman went with, with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be re- restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. Uh, not Abana and Papa the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel, couldn't I have washed, couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. And a name man, Nina Pong, calling in Tia Sienam, Babijina, Elisha, Fia Punano, Ne Elisha Suma, or Bofo Mano, call him Chainse, Conaco Jari in Prince, so your damn moon, now who be sunny about home, now who effie, and now. Neman bufui na osim koe ka se she me kanu mitri mu se fre na obe fri obe fri aba abe jina ho abo eradi ni nyangu pundi na ode nensa asra ho na wasa kotano damasco in subonte ne abana ne papa nyensi ne israel in sioni na anka miri nyari mu na mihu infia na neman had one serious problem. In his mind, what rivers were powerful and what rivers were not powerful. Because of that, when he was told to go and bath in the Jordan, he felt that it was demeaning for him to do that. This is where many of us have a problem like Naaman. Some of us have gra- gra- graded the various services that we have in the church. We believe that some are more powerful than others. So we, we don't attend some and we attend the ones that we feel are powerful. Let, let us take, for instance, um, sheepfold. Those of you who have not been going, ask yourself, you know why you don't go? Some of them feel that they have listened to this message in the morning. And it is okay. Some feel that the people in their sheepfold, they know the Bible more than them. So what are they going to them for? I want you to note something very carefully. It was a slave girl who told Naaman about the prophet. The way for him to be healed came from a slave girl. So if you think that you know too much, more than if you put your sheep for so you are not going, you are missing something. Everybody has a problem. And God has a way of solving your problem. Many of us are behaving like Naaman. We think that the way God has made for us to be healed or to receive the blessing that we need, uh, we think it is not really the correct way. We think we know more than God. I want you also to note that when Naaman went to the prophet's house, it was not the prophet who told him to what to go and do. It was a servant of the prophet. 
a face so ni man could do Elisha come she need few one one Elisha when pio na na kuwa no suma no odi a some suma ne se onko kanchi ne the end the the path to the solution for his problem came through slave girls and house house boys or whatever not to any uh, person of uh, dignity or as we will quote it i say no good job who she name mana not me how no yeah no no you know that she's a cousin of you and quam quam yeah the power muscle god has his way for you go to the seafood and listen to the way god has planned for you to come out of your problem oh yeah me no name was a shamao Sometimes we think that uh, it's only through major programs that we receive the solution to our problems. It is not always like that. Now, if you look at we are looking at another instance. There was a time God told Elijah that he was going to visit him. And God told him to stand somewhere and he, God, will come and pass. Elijah was somebody who had experienced the power of God. So when God was coming, he was expecting that God would come forth with power. So I want us to look at the way God visited him. We are looking at 1 Kings 19, yes, 11 to 13. Uh, 1 Kings 19, 11 to 13. From verse 11 to verse 13. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. I say, na o can say, free di kujina bi pono so eradi enim na she eradi chemu na mframa kesi a eye dim pai pai mi po a na ebubu abutain. You can imagine a type of wind which is able to break rocks. But God was not in it. And then it went on to say that after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. No, before. Before 12. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Now, from one way, you know, as I say, was war, na and yet, as I na na and yet, as I say, was war, no moon, a radio war. Uh huh. There was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. Or say, as I say, was soy, so none of your meaning, as I say, only as I say, was war, no moon. Verse 12 says, After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Elijah was somebody who had encountered God by fire. Elijah was somebody who had encountered God by fire. Elijah was somebody who had encountered God by so he was expecting God to come in a dramatic way. But we saw that in all these instances, God was not in it. And after, after the fire came a gentle whisper. Na eba say, is it the thirteen? Yeah, the end, the last, the, bit, the the last end, sentence. Okay. Na ojanu echi na inframa a ebo bre bi bi ni di. The 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 key translation that isn't very clear, but it says that. And after the fire came a gentle whisper, mm. a small voice. If you saw on the version, say a small voice. Or say a bo bre inframa bo bre. So please. If you have made up your mind that certain programs in the church are more powerful than the other, so the one that you have termed as more powerful, you, you won't attend, you are missing the presence of God. But God, you know, as, as we learned, we are citizens of the kingdom. 
We have the right to receive God's blessings. But we also have responsibilities. So if you fail your responsibility, don't expect to receive your blessing. If God is coming on Wednesday at the Wednesday Bible study and you are at home, you will carry your problem until you die. Because it is your responsibility to be here to receive the directions for the solution of your problem. We are looking at another example. There was a man in the Bible. He was called Cornelius. A friend of Cornelius. The Bible says that he was a very good man. But he didn't know Christ. So God arranged that Peter should go and give the word to him. So on the day that Peter went there, Cornelius gathered his whole family. And they sat down and they were listening to Peter. I wanted to see what happened. We are looking at Acts 10, 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. They were not at a prayer meeting. There was no laying of, uh, of hands on people. They were just listening. And the power of God came down. If you think that the Wednesday meeting is just a Bible study or just come to listen, you are missing out a lot. In the same way, some people to the Sunday morning Bible studies, they think it is of no use. There are some people, they have never been present for the opening prayer of any Bible study. Some of them, they intentionally come late all the time. You are missing a lot. This morning I was listening to uh, Pastor Mensa Otabel. And he said that sometimes pastors go through a lot of frustration. He said one of the things that he's been speaking about is lateness. Now I can say and you know sometimes if you don't know the blessing in coming to church early it, for the, the pastor knows the blessing that you get from coming to church early so when he sees that the people repeatedly refuse to come it's a pain in his heart those who have decided that the morning Bible studies is of no consequences, I want to encourage you to change your mind. The devil will always be happy when you keep losing your blessings. He doesn't mind any lie he will tell you for you to accept to refuse to be there when you are supposed to be there. He will give you reasons why you should think that certain meetings in the church are not important. A lot of times we hear people saying that because of work, maybe the midweek service they cannot attend. Yes, we know it is. Some have very genuine reasons. But when those people are on leave, do their att attendance change? You see, 
so, sometimes, you know, last, last week I was telling the people in my sheepfold that sometimes when we come to church, we sing. If I can carry you, Lord, I will carry you. I can meet, meet, to, meet to me, I meet you or something. And then we dance. Now, the one that we know we can do, come early. We are refusing to do. Then the one that we know we can do, we are telling God that God, if I, 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 could, I could do it, I would have done it. <laughs> okay, eh? you say. Now, what you have to say, you have to say, you have to say, you have to say, say, come here to me, I come here. You have to say, 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 you have to you know, the Bible says that we should not be deceived. God is not mocked. What we sow is what we reap. If you come and you are saying that in the presence of God, you know it is not what you are saying is not from your heart. You are deceiving yourself. You are not deceiving God. Amen. Any anum? Oh, sorry. Please make sure that you are serving God like we read from the beginning with your whole heart. Give yourself to the Lord as a living sacrifice. Adolfo mummy and she say, Yes, if you are come as a ton, yes, sumer, yet the crani a brabo to us a foria at Siasse. So let us look at what happened to Naaman eventually. Naaman. Naaman eventually, yeah. We are going back. We are going back. We are going back. Yeah, we are looking at verse 13 and verse 14. Yeah, verse 13 and verse 14. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then, when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down, dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Kachre <laughs> If you will repent this morning and be obedient and start attending the meetings, you will get the solution to your Amen. problem. The one that you've prayed Amen. over for several Amen. years and you are not getting, God is going to use those meetings. You are going to hear the solution. You, you take action and you come and praise God. Last Wednesday, Liverpool was playing Real Madrid. I'm sure because of that, some people did not come to church. The young ones. Should we show by hands? <laughs> <laughs> you see? So, uh, now, I want you to ask yourself, after watching the match, from Wednesday up to now, what benefit have you gotten from it? But, but that day, I'm sure the devil made it look like, hey, this match, you can't miss it all. You, you have to be there. You have to watch it. Hey, Salah is there. Benzema is there. Hey, if you miss it, you have missed something, oh, I must watch it. Oh, now, when some time for you, you see it, you say, hey, I go from my way, so one cost one. And you have to be there. Now, you have to go down for one. And you have to be there. And you have to be there. And you have to be The devil will always continue to tell us lies. And if we accept the lies, we'll be deceived and we'll miss our blessings. Sometimes our brothers who are artisans, like masons and carpenters, when you talk to them like they should come for Wednesday meeting, you say, oh, I don't close early. I don't close early, so I can't come. Sometimes, 
If tomorrow you are not well and you go to the hospital and the doctor says that stay at home, don't work for one month, you will comply. Some of them will even tell the doctor, please, are you sure the one month is not making two months? Let me sit at home. Because he is afraid to die. And then the one who is preventing the doctor from telling you to stop work says that on Wednesdays, close a bit early and come and listen to his word. That one you say you have never heard about that one before. You can't come. If just one day in a week you close a bit early and come to the Wednesday Bible study and prayer, you are not going to lose anything. You are rather going to be blessed. Amen. Don't forget that. Serve God with our whole heart. God doesn't like it when we serve him partially. Let us look at what the Lord said. We are looking at Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Concerning Chapter 9, verse, verse. 62. 60. 62. 62. Look at some party. You're back again. You are some year new. And you see a year new. Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. Now, yes, you catch around or say, Obi a ordain and saka, Nesne ordain and sa, Koso, Funtum dead, Funtum dead, dear mo. We get rewards for our service. So if you have been disqualified from working, then there, there's no reward for you. So if you want to receive a reward in the kingdom, you see, we are talking about kingdom principles. Please, let us not think that the kingdom works like how the world works. Oh. There are principles in the kingdom. If you don't live by them, you are wasting your time as a Christian. It says that if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you are not fit for service in the kingdom. If you are not fit for service, then you are not fit for reward. If you are serving God, serve him. If you don't want to serve him too, Blow all the time in the world. God likes it that way. Amen. Or say, Sa wo sum ya mia, fa wun yi na somno. Won somno swa korea se na kwa ji weni ye yi muba kon. We are looking at our last verse. I feel ye sha asemwa ye beck and ken chatu. We are looking at Re- Revelation three verse fifteen. E di sem two fifteen. Three. Three. Revelation three. E di sem timi and sa nji chemu dunum. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and, and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will, I'm about to spew you, spit you out of my mouth. Are we, uh, 15 and 15, eh? Just okay. Fifteen. Just uh, sixteen, eh? One five. One the fifteen. Yeah. And do no more say. Mini mu numa se won won yen you know na won yes she. Se won yen you know na she ya anke ye. Yeah, continue with fifteen. Sixteen. Okay. Na fe ye. En nam se won won ye botro bojo na won ye won yes she ana you nun ti me fi wo me fi me numu. Amen. Amen. Nobody spits and put takes it back into his mouth. So, the Lord is saying that if you serve him, serve him wholly. If, if you are not serving him to do whatever, uh, commit all the sins, he likes it that way. What he hates is you are in between 
Today you are coming, the next day you are not coming. Today you are coming. God doesn't like us to serve him that way. He says that if you do that, he will spit to you out of his mouth. And as I said, nobody spits and go back to the spirit. I want you to examine your life. Are you hot or cold? We are not joking in the kingdom. It is, it is a very, very serious business in the kingdom. It is the grace of God. In the olden days, as soon as you do it, you are dead, you are gone. Let us not know that we appreciate what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. Let us stop accepting the lies from Satan. You know, this lies from Satan, it started long time ago. If you read Hebrews 10, uh, Paul was saying that, you know, do not neglect the coming together of the brethren. As it is a habit of some. So, that, that, those lies, the devil started, even Paul's time, those lies were there. And he was getting people to follow the lies. In our present time, to those lies are there. He will make you think that certain church programs are not powerful, so you don't come. If there's, there's no prophet, you won't come. If a prophet comes, that one, you will be the first person to come. But I want you to change your mind today. Decide that from today, whenever possible, whatever meeting you will attend. And just as Naaman finally obeyed and he was healed. The solution for that problem that you've been facing for so many years will come. Let us pray. I want you to pray for yourself. I don't know what God has told you. What Our Father in heaven, we thank you very much for your word today. Your word tells us that you give us the will to do what we need to do, and you give us the ability to do what we need to do. We are asking for divine grace that from today we shall renew our love for you, we shall change our minds, we shall refuse to listen to the lies of the enemy and come and receive the blessing that you have ordained for us at the various meetings. So that God, we shall live in joy, and our joy will draw those who don't know you. They will draw them. The joy will draw them to you too, so that they also come experience your power and your love. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's still bow down our heads as we pray.